Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, love, laugh, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Fett on UVNRadio.com. And welcome. You are tuned in to my weekly talk radio show called Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get Balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at naturally high noon at the Universal Broadcasting Network and TV, uh, radio and TV out of the Sunset Gower Studios and also on my syndicated CNBC News Radio channel, KCAA AM 1050 on Thursdays at 7 p.m. and now Saturdays at noon, all Pacific Standard Time. And this is a show about hope and how to be happy 88% of the time. So there's no gossip, no scandal, and no K-words, no Kardashian talk at all. Instead, I want you to focus on your reality show, your life, and how fabulously magnificent it is. And a special shout out this week to, I, I'm so grateful I get to do the most amazing things. I started out, this is my birthday month. So August 1st, I got to do my balance on the beach uh, workshop with some fabulous people and get them to focus on their breath and their connection with chi and eternal energy and the, and the friendly universe. And then I went right to the Special Olympics and got to award Terrell Limerick amongst other uh, fabulous Special Olympics athletes uh, for the sailing portion of the Olympics and World Games. And thank you so much to the Shriver family for that uh, this magnificent uh, activity that happens every four years, just like the Olympics. And I have to say, it is going down in my life books, on my book of life, as one of the most meaningful chapters that I have ever had. Um, I got not only to go because I sail with the U.S. Sailing Center Hey, crew. Hey, skipper. <laughs> uh, that not only do I get to race, but I got to help host the Chinese delegation that came to their sister city, Long Beach, and got to speak Chinese. Xie xie, ni hao, and talk to a lot of the, the Special Olympics uh, athletes. And I was actually recognized by some of them, too, as apparently Dr. Marissa is a big deal in China. Xie xie, ni men ting wo. And uh, then I got to present medals, and it was just so moving because the um, one, one particular instant was the unified sailing teams. We had four Catalina 20s that went out, unity, friendship, courage, and respect. And they had one sailing pro, two special athletes, and then one Special Olympics dignitary. And each of the four boats raced uh, on the waters by Belmont Pier, and uh, one of the boats had the Olympic sailor, the not Special Olympics, but Olympics uh, sailing medal, Tom Shadden. And he said that it was the most important day or the best day of sailing he had in his life. And that just like moved me. And then the second most moving was uh, Michael who was a special athlete from the Netherlands team, another fabulous connection because I lived in Brussels for two years so I could do the hoehatet in uh, Dutch as well as the for French with the Belgian team. But Michel uh, was not only Down syndrome but autistic, according to his coach, and he said that in the entire time he's been with Mikhail he's he's most of the time catatonic but in these games and on the boat and in the water he was alive and I saw him and he was w just a beaming uh, symbol of life and how good life is so xie xie to the Special Olympics and the Shriver family and all the people who volunteered. It was magnificent, and I wanted to definitely give them a little time on the show to celebrate my 170th week on the air. And um, I guess I'll... Thank you. <laughs> and 
I thought it would be a great time to also promote some of the other hosts that are on the air with me. So there's going to be some calling in from my KCAA CNBC channel, as well as in studio, someone who just started her show here at UBN and has the auspicious place to be after me. So I'm warming, I'm warming up the crowd for her. And uh, she just told me she's 80, which is when you see her shot, you're going to be un unbelievable. But um, Reba Merrill is a celebrity journalist. Let me see. I, I sort of, uh, let's see. She's interviewed some of Hollywood's finest, including some of my favorites, Meryl Streep, Johnny Depp, Harrison Ford, Robert Downey Jr., Robin Williams, Paul Newman, Robert Redford, Whitney Houston, Tom Cruise, for three decades. And the best part is she's not gossipy. Um, she does get you know, into the, the, the heart of people. Uh, she's had four talk shows, an Emmy, and a fearless memoir that we'll talk about in a bit, and sits on the Leadership Council for AIDS Project Los Angeles. Please welcome... Reba Merrill. Thank you. And I can't believe you're 80. You do not look 80. I want to look like that when I'm 80. I, I mean, Marianne, Don Wells was here a couple weeks ago. She's 76 and she looks fabulous. And you. I think it's. Are I fabulous. think it's here. I think it's. That's attitude. what she says. Mm -hmm. That's what she says. And no plastic surgery. No, but I do use fillers. I'm not going to say that. I don't. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's it's truly. I I agree with you. I think it's attitude. So I should probably hopefully look like this when I'm 100. <laughs> <My pleasure. laughs> I'm Wonderful. not quite a hundred. I don't even feel. I don't feel eighty. I really. You don't, don't look eighty. I don't. I yeah. feel vibrant and alive and thrilled to be able to do something that makes me feel good mm -hmm. and realize that since no one will hire me at eighty, I'll just hire myself. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I, your show is on right after me on Tuesdays at one. one. Real Hollywood Live. Real Hollywood. As opposed to dead. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that's good. And, and, and what do you talk about on your show? Well, what fascinates me about Hollywood, since I spent so many years there, was how to make it. Because mm. it's a tough town without ethics, filled with cruelty, filled with jealousy, filled with all the traits that we know are not good for us. Mm -hmm. And yet that... Oop. Whoops. <laughs> Our well, microphone just... Uh, but that's what Hollywood is all about. And I wanted, it was very important to me to talk to people who had made it but didn't slide through to make it, mm -hmm. had all the hills and valleys and the bumps of life. Right. Because that's what we all have. Right. And, and what would you say to, I, one of my theories around Hollywood is that the, for, for many of the actors, some of the ones I just had on my list uh, who've had, you know the the highest of highs, like that ABC, the 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 the, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. That there seems to be this high correlation between sensitivity, extreme sensitivity that can sometimes lead to depression. Robin Williams, obviously, Whitney Houston. Um, that that you, you know that very fine line between genius artistic creativity and this despair or the hopelessness that can drive them to overdosing or committing suicide. I think you don't feel loved. Mm. I think that's what it is. I think we all want to be loved. Uh, they get it publicly. Mm -hmm. We, uh, for the most part, get it privately mm -hmm. and we can deal with it. I noticed in the 23 years that I interviewed these people, and, and remember, I was interviewing them because they were working. I wasn't interviewing them during those periods where they weren't and filled with questions. But when you sit down with somebody like Meryl Streep and she's waiting to be unemployed. Uh-huh. What? She said that in your inter interview? Oh, yeah. She's waiting for the sword to drop because okay. that's part of the career they chose. Now, it just so happens that she was able to, it, she really never had to wait. But she waited no. a long time to start. Mm. She was scared to death to audition. She was scared to death. She would wow. have just stayed in Yale Drama School for the rest of her life hmm. and did school plays <laughs> yeah. um, and couldn't audition when Yale had set up an audition, could not audition 
with everybody else and then and went to the woman that arranged it and the next day and the next day and said is it possible for me to still do this audition and she got the audition alone and was instantly chosen to do Shakespeare in the park and that's how it started wow very cool but you hit on what it is it is i think very creative people and especially actors are extremely shy mm. and so when they put on a character it's like a fine leather glove that fits so tight mm -hmm. you can't see mm -hmm. the actor from the character mm -hmm. and it and it is definitely a talent and i think that you know the it's a, it's a balance you know i'm all about balance but we have sometimes a tendency to put them on a pedestal that they don't one, they're not comfortable with themselves, and we we blow it out of proportion. It is a talent, it is a gift, but it doesn't make them comfortable, perfect either. So so there's that setup too, and you know we live in Hollywood, so we get it probably the most. We see it, and then and then and then the people who who don't necessarily have that gift or talent who seem to to be in the news all the time so so the the system itself i think breeds some issues or some opportunities for improvement and and you mentioned it i mean the cruelty that is baseline or okay in this industry okay <laughs> it's acceptable yes it's more than okay it's acceptable behavior and Whoever has the power, which means whoever has the money, mm -hmm. feels not a qualm in the world yeah. about destroying somebody mm -hmm. if they didn't like them. Yeah, and th that just doesn't doesn't seem right. But the, I mean, the the great news about I think about technology and YouTube and all of the things that are that are you know accessible now for almost everyone around is that. Uh, you know, you don't have to, you're not at the mercy of the person who has the casting couch. I think that is one of the best things about technology and YouTube and your, your, your ability to promote yourself or put yourself out there so that everyone has a unique talent, gift, and ability. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that there's only the special few that needs an agent that's going to go and, although uh, uh, the Jerry Maguire was, is cute, you know, to have that kind of relationship with your agent. But but the, the great news about what, what's going on today is you can record something on your own, and if that's your gift and talent, then you can get on Facebook and it can get hits and then it goes to a million and then, you know, you, you can you can be known for, for the good. Well, I'll share a casting couch story because it's mine. <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm only a, an interviewer. Mm -hmm. I'm a journalist. And after my career was over, even though I had an Emmy, I had a lot of rejections and I knew that I had to start over. And so I came up to L.A. from San Diego, where I was working for CBS and doing their morning show, mm -hmm. and uh, went to, I, I won't use names, I went okay. to a major, to protect major, the guilty. Stu a major, major <laughs> studio. Uh -huh. I had my interview reel. He looked at him, he said, oh my God, you are terrific. You look like you came from Central Casting. You look like you belong on television. And he says, I can give you all the work you can handle. And I said, oh, thank you. Right. First job interview yeah. out of the box. Oh, God, was I excited. He <laughs> says, let's have dinner to talk about it. Oh, I thought, isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. Fancy restaurant, got to dessert. And he said, give you all the work you want. You only have to, whoops, I don't know how to put it. Uh, yeah, I go put on. that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Three times a week. I mean, he had a precise oh, order. Oh, no. I was really lucky. Mm. He was disgusting in all ways. Oh, I'm so sorry that and happened. And so I walked away. It didn't took me eight years to wow. get a job at that studio. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, the good news is all that's over. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Everything is over. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, no, that's not true. And we actually have a caller on the air, and I'm going to welcome them to the studio. You are uh, calling in to take my advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. And who do we have on the phone? Oh, uh, well, I don't know about advice, but I just wanted to wish you a happy birthday. Oh, is this Gary Garver? It sure is. Oh, you're so 
adorable. This is Gary. He's got a fabulous show on KCAA AM 1050 radio, as well as iHeartRadio, as well as he used to work for someone who, unless you want to say it, you don't have to say it. Uh, I'd rather, I rather not mention <laughs> okay. his name. Thank That's you. fine. But uh, he's, I've actually been on his show. And so thank you for calling and saying happy birthday. Can I make How it? Old are you, are you going to sing it? Twenty-nine again? Is that it? Uh, no, nineteen. Oh, oh nineteen. It, I'm yeah, sorry. we go. We go way back. <laughs> well, I, well, I can't. I can't. I can't even take you out for a shot at tequila today. Huh? No, unfortunately not. But um, <laughs> <laughs> tell us when your show is on. Uh, my show is on Monday through Friday, eight a.m. to nine a.m. Pacific, called Controlled Chaos on KCAA, ten fifty a.m. KCAARadio dot com, and uh. We just talk about all sorts of weird things yes. in life. Yes. <laughs> when I was on that time, um, I think there was a stripper before me and then a sports guy after me. <laughs> there you go. That, that's about the, that sums up my show right there. <laughs> well, thanks so much for calling in, Gary. Well, have a great birthday, Dr. Marissa. Thank God you. Bless you. You too. Thanks. Bye. I'm really embarrassed. I didn't wish you a happy birthday. Oh, right that's off okay. The top. That's all right. That's all right. I I can make you sing it. Oh no, you'd have to pay. <laughs> then you'd have to pay for it. <laughs> sing, sing. Happy birthday, no. dear no. me. And then pay for it. <laughs> but they really come around and collect the money. Do they? Oh, absolutely. Oops. Oh well. I hope she didn't, didn't finish hear that. the song. No, yeah, that's right. I did. It sounds very much like another song. <laughs> I had no idea. Oh yes. Oh. A little old lady created it for her sister. Well, she wasn't oh. an old lady at the time. She's now dead, but oh, she, it's been around for a long time. Oh. And yes, the oh, family okay. collects. All right. Well, I, as they probably should, because it's a great song and, it, and it's been played a lot. And while we're talking about KCAA for one second, um, I want to just thank. All of my AM 1050 listeners and all those who went to KCAARadio.com Thursday, last Thursday, my numbers, I've only been there a year and I'm over a thousand, which puts me, just for that one episode, that doesn't count how many people were driving and listening, but just on the computer, which puts me in the top third or 30% of that station with mm -hmm. Dave Ramsey and Imus in the Morning and Gary Garver, who just called in. So, and mm -hmm. thank you so much. Never underestimate a woman. <laughs> Absolutely, especially this one. <laughs> and, and you as well, too. And you have a memoir called Nearly, Nearly Famous. Nearly Famous. Here it is. It's and I have my own copy. Thank you very much. That's my birthday present. Yes. And tell me about this. Well, originally it started because when I was finished working in Hollywood, I um, took up a career as a lecturer on cruise ships, yeah. showing some of my interviews, which were all done on video. I recut them for the ships, and people kept saying, well, how did somebody like you get to Tom Cruise or Johnny Depp? That's a good question. Street? I was going to ask you the same question. <laughs> and so I wrote the book because okay. I, did, I, I only had 45 minutes. Mm -hmm to do the cruise program. And I had to th show the interviews and take the questions and give the stories behind it. And it made me actually, I wrote it just really to answer that, but it made me take a look back at my life and mm -hmm. how I had changed as a woman. Because I, I tell you that about my age, well, my age dictated what my career was. Mm -hmm. My career was marriage oh. and family okay. forever. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't always work out that way, but that's how I was raised. I, first of all, in my spelling class, they never had C-A-R-E-E-R, -E -E -R, ever. Oh, right, right. Well, 1980. Well, so you're I was born 80, in 1935. Come on, we don't have to do it. I mean, okay. does it, you know. Well, I was just trying to quickly do no, math, okay. but I'm not but as I have Asian to say, as I look. I but, wasn't um, The way I was able to survive in Hollywood is that I lied about my age. So I celebrated my 40th birthday twice. Oh. So that gave me a 10-year jump. Okay. So I came to Hollywood. I was 47. I hit, I was really big by my 50th birthday, so I invited all the people I was working for to my 40th. Ah. And, and also because I wasn't good in math, I was good enough to take a decade and 
add and subtract. Okay. I could do that. Okay. So, so how did you? At 47, you became a celebrity journalist. How does that happen? Well, I was working in television. I did all those talk shows. Mm -hmm. I knew how to interview. I knew how to interview. And nobody wanted me. I think um, in those days, 45 was a killer. Today, yeah. you can go up a little to 50 right. <laughs> as yeah. a woman. No, yeah. I mean, Well, I'm ageless, so... So the thing, yeah, but you see, you can't keep your age a secret with IMDb. <laughs> you you just can't. Right. And and so the I'm thing is that there. when I acknowledged, I'll tell you how I did it. Maybe you could translate what I did. Okay. Um, I have an Emmy and 18 rejections after the Emmy. Okay. So I That's knew that I was not going to get another job on television. Mm. So I looked in a mirror. And I talked to myself, and I said, can you give up the perks? It's wonderful to do a local talk show. No matter where you do it, everybody knows who you are. And it's, it's, it's really nice television. You're not being nasty. And mm -hmm. so people love you. Mm -hmm. And I went back to that original thing. It feels really good to be loved. Right, right. And so I, it, it was a hard debate to give up being somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I said... Well, if you can't do that, what are you good at? Mm -hmm. Be honest, Reva. What are you really good at? Ooh, it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. Because if you ask my husband, I'm not the greatest cook. You ask my kids, <laughs> I never made cookies. So I wasn't that kind of a mother. Right, right, right. But I could interview. There was something that happened between me and whoever I interviewed that some intimacy yeah, came I out of that. their humanness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not anything that was in poor taste, but who we are as human beings yeah. would come Beautiful. out of somebody very, very yeah. famous. Yeah. That's and great. So and so I said, I could be an interviewer. <laughs> Good, and then, and then it just went from there. We're gonna come back, we have a caller on the air. Mm. So I will say hello, you're welcome to take my advice. <laughs> I'm not using it, get balanced with Dr. Marissa, and who do we have on the line? Dr. Marissa, hi, it's uh, Josh Lane. I'm calling to wish you a happy birthday. Thank you, Josh. Thank you very much. Do, we're not going to have you pleasure. sing it. <laughs> I, sorry to talk over you there. I have listened to your show, and I know that uh, you give advice. And so I thought then I would tell you a psychologist joke. How many psychologists does it take to change a light bulb? Only one. But the That's light correct. bulb has to really want to change. <laughs> it's an old joke. It's, it's a golden oldie, so I figured I'd offer that to your listeners. Thank you for letting me do the punchline. <laughs> okay. it's, it's my pleasure. Yes, it, it, it is your show. So have you. fun. I enjoy your show, and I think you strengthen the lineup for WKCAA. That's I have a wellness right. show. Kind of fits in very nicely with yours. And tell me the and name of your show. Yeah, my show is Cheers to Your Health. Uh, every Monday evening, 6 to 7 p.m., and again, rebroadcast every Saturday from 6 to 7 p.m., and last night, I'm happy to say, I had Kim Alexis on, the fashion model from the 1980s, who was on the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Issue six times in wow. her zenith. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. That's, uh, so and it's, she's a wellness person. It's health she's for a your clean eyes. And she was great. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, thank you for calling in, and uh, everybody can uh, tune in to your show Mondays, for health and wellness. That's right. Thank you, Dr. Mr. Have a good birthday. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Nice. Yeah. Isn't that nice? I, I've actually had um, fabulous guests myself. I don't know if you've looked at my lineup, but my not as not as big as your names. No, no, uh, even okay. though even though my names were I mean, Fran Drescher is a pretty big name and she was fabulous. She came on because I don't invite actors because they're actors. I don't I invite actors to, because they're actors yeah, either. <laughs> yeah. They have to be uh, I, I invite them because I give out the beneficial presence on the Planet Award for people who are doing so it was just as important for me that you were on the council of Project AIDS LA, as it is that you interviewed um, Johnny Depp. Okay. So, and, and that's the same to me. Yeah, I wouldn't be me if I didn't be able to give back. I was also on the National Council for Mental Health. Hmm. Uh, I, I'm on the board of Hillview Mental Health. Oh. Yeah. So we have that in Because I do believe that mental health, especially working in Hollywood, you need it. You have to be aware of <laughs> the capabilities of how much you can survive when people don't want you right. or people are nasty, and they are nasty. Yeah, so you actually asked me a question when I asked you to prepare 
and and that was how do you handle rejection? Hollywood style, though. Hollywood style rejection. Well, I did eight years of modeling, and it's probably not the same, but I did get like grabbed on by my arm and under under here and say lose that or, uh, you know, what makes you think that you can. Uh, be on the runway or you know obviously you haven't looked in a mirror lately oh. so 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 I do understand that and I do understand that there is a level of cruelty in this business that uh, that has been accepted and is okay and I think I, I'm I'm hoping that all of the actors that I admire have the reason why they are successful is because they know that rejection is not personal. At least that's how I handle rejection. When I go up for something or I bid for something or I want something and the, the door is not open, that's, that just tells me that either the timing's right or it isn't the best use of my, my unique skill, talent, and ability. And that's how I handle rejection. That doesn't mean that when I get like a thumbs down that it doesn't, I don't go, oh, <laughs> that hurt like what what, what a, how could you put a thumbs down on on a you know a, an interview with Rick O'Berry who's doing so much to uh you know stop the slaughter of dolphins in in Japan like how how could you but but whoever is rejecting me it's not about me it's about them and their relationship with me and it's okay well as long as I have the couch I got an, I have another question okay to ask you. <laughs> How do you deal with the fear mm. of failing? That's another Hollywood, mm. and, and that really was my story. I hit so big that all of a sudden I was absolutely sure that they were going to find out I really was a fraud and didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is very true of most successful people people who uh, get to that point where they go waiting for the other shoe to drop yeah. or as you said with Meryl Streep you know when is she going to get that sword so for me I know that I'm doing this because it has it's under no control of mine this was not my idea radio was never my idea I didn't grow up saying this is a goal of mine and about eight years ago, through a very difficult divorce, I got connected with what I call my UPS man, my universal power source. And he delivers every morning when I pray and meditate. And I know that I'm on this planet for a purpose to just plant seeds. I just get to be creative. I just get to play. I just get to do things to learn. And one of the quickest ways to learn is to not do it correctly. So when you don't do it correctly, you learn how to do it. And it's not even correct, bad right, wrong. It's about, I'm on this planet to expand. And expansion can come from success, and it can come from standing up after something called failure. And that's why it's so important to me just to plant the seeds and let go of the outcome. So if I get criticism, or if I fail, who is the judge of that? No one is the judge of that. The, I know that as long as I do the best that I can with the time that I have, with the resources I have, 88% of the time, and I ask myself that every night before I go to bed, then I'm golden. It's really not up to me. It's not under my control. I'm not alone in this. I'm on, a, I'm on this planet to expand and express as you are. And no one does it like you do. And no one does it like anybody else does. 7.3 unique people doing what they can do to make this planet a better, or yeah. leave this planet a better place. But human beings are very hard on themselves. True. 99 compliments, <laughs> one Failure, criticism, and the, they remember. And they remember that. <laughs> you want to, I was a professor, okay, I was a professor at, uh, I don't know if I want to tell this story, but I already started it. <laughs> well, actually, I might be saved by the promotion. <laughs> We're coming up against commercial break to oh. thank the sponsors of today's episode, my 170th week on the air. And uh, I want to just give a real shout out to the Lighthouse, who you're going to hear about in a second. I did a show with them on addiction, and it was a powerful show. So uh, we'll be back in two and two. Peace <laughs> in and peace out. Are you tired of dealing with your loved one's addiction to drugs and or alcohol? Are you ready for a solid recovery program that is licensed by the state of California and CARF accredited 
that is delivered by an experienced, professional, and caring staff that have a personal experience in recovery? Then call Anaheim Lighthouse at 877-959-5909. That's 1-877-959-5909 today to shine your life light again. Looking for a rejuvenating getaway? Then Salt Oasis is your answer. This holistic wellness center allows you to escape your worries while absorbing nature's healing properties. Salt therapy has been a trusted way to help individuals suffering from a wide range of respiratory and autoimmune disorders to skin conditions and anxiety. Salt Oasis is conveniently located in Rancho Cucamonga near Victoria Gardens. Call 909 291 7258. That's 909 291 7258. And plan your escape into wellness. And we're back. And you are tuned into the birthday episode for Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at Naturally High Noon here at UBN and Thursdays at 7 and Saturdays at noon at my syndicated CNBC News Radio, KCAA AM 1050. And today we, oh, and if you heard those sponsor ads and you like my show and want to be promoted and and uh, endorsed on the show i have very very reasonable rates because i think that like i said before about not everybody having a, an agent or anything we're here together and we want to help each other so if you have a book to promote or a service like salt oasis then just contact me for very very affordable rates all right end of commercial coming back to rejection uh yes it is true especially for high achievement oriented people okay. uh my, my doctor's in organizational psychology, which isn't clinical, but we deal with human dynamics at work, which is power, politics, miscommunication, conflict, and humans and their foibles. Their <laughs> foibles. They're irrational. <laughs> you know, rash, common sense is uncommon, right? So yes. common sense would say if you do 99 things right, right? So I was teaching, I spent 10 years uh, graduate school, six years at UCLA in the Anderson School, and I would get great comments, great ratings, you know. Uh, she's a great teacher, great communicator. I love her outfits. <laughs> uh, all this really positive stuff. And I had one student, one student who said, I would rather eat glass than have to sit through another one of Dr. Marissa's lectures. One comment. That was only one bad comment. I had 99 fabulous comments. I get the high, second But look at it. You remembered so, it. But I remember it. So this is the uncommon sense. So what do I have to do? I just broke the rule, which is you just don't think about it. You don't talk about it. You don't give your mind the luxury of going there. Now that I've told all of my 88,000 listeners across the planet that story, and I do not want a message about that, and I do not want to hear about it again because I just don't entertain. So that's the advice since you're on my couch. But wait a minute. What happens now with the Internet and you get anonymous? Oh, Nasty comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does that mean you've made it? Well, I, I don't the, know. The, yeah, the the well, they say you know any press is good press, bad press, or whatever. Yeah. But but again, you probably get many many more positive, you know, likes and thank you, and you're a great interviewer, and look at what you've done with your life, and you're 80 years old, and wow wow wow, and you choose to go to that comment that is nasty. So that's your choice. We cannot choose what happens to us, but we can choose how we react to that. So I had the same thing. You know, I have like thousands of positive things every week now from likes and, and endorsements and everything. And if I do get a negative and I... <laughs> this have is very not few. <laughs> I have very few. But when I do, you know, of course, my first reaction is <gasps> if I looked like you, I'd be miserable too. <laughs> so that's that little mean, you know. But then I stop and I go, okay, you know, uh, one of my teachers, Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith, he will say, you know, you've made it when you start getting hate. 
and oh, and well, and I guess I've made it. There, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course, I'm hoping always, but what what I do is I choose to focus on that. I I give thanks every day. I start with eight gratitudes every single day, and I don't give room for those things. And when I do have that come across my mind, I have the D G T. Don't go there. there. And I just don't. I just I, don't. I've gotten to the point that I actually laugh at some of this stuff be, because I, I realized that once I told the world that I was 80, I also wanted to tell them, I don't give a damn what you yes, think of me. Yes, yes, And then yes. I thought, gee, isn't it a shame I had to wait till I was 80? Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, I'm not there, but I am there. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm very happy to say, this is not to invite anything negative, but I did have Ter Dr. Terry Cole Whitaker on, and she wrote that best-selling book. Oh, she book. was my friend in San was Diego. She? she did my show in San Diego. Oh, did she? Oh, yeah. Terry oh. and I go too far yeah, back. But oh. New York Times bestseller. What you think of me, me is, is none, none of my, of my business. business yeah. and, and what I think of you is none of your business, too. And if we get that, if we really focus on us, am I happy right now? Am I happy? Uh, well, I'm thinking about the, the chewing glass. No, I'm not happy. So I'm going to stop thinking about that. And instead of that, I'm going to think about all of this wonderful messages of support I've gotten this week, all the likes, all the people who, uh, Janina Ar Aravada, you know, who said thank you so much, and the retweets and all the, all the positive things. Reba, you've interviewed some of the most famous, fabulous, yeah. famous actors. Like, who gives a flying through a rolling donut? About some nasty thing that some, you know, I, I do look at when I do, I've gotten two nasty comments and I look at who they are. Well, have they talk done a talk show? Have they done a radio show? Have, what, you know, my dad used to call critics um, one legged men who, <laughs> who are uh, uh, coaching running. You know, you, I mean, so, so you got to take that. So, but, but, but before we run out of time, what was it like? You interviewed Robin Williams yeah. six times, Thanks. six times, and you started to say something that I'm making you save for the show. But tell me about the reflections. Well, Robin on Williams that. was really interesting. Everybody that interviewed him was so excited because what they got was a Robin Williams comedy routine, mm -hmm. and I said to him, "You don't want you if you keep me laughing, I'll never know who you are." Mm -hmm. And he looked at me. He smiled, and I said, do you know who you are? And he said, yes. I said, are you going to tell me? And he said, no. Mm. And so that was the first interview I did with him. And then I thought, okay, I'm not going to put up with a comedy routine. Mm -hmm. We did mm -hmm. have a ritual, though. I must say this. He worked overtime to make me laugh. And what made my interviews work is that you didn't hear me. And everybody in the world, because by then they were playing in 60 countries, we're taking credit for the interview. So to laugh would kill the, the track and right. it would be right. useless. So I would walk into the suite to do the interview and I'd say, excuse me, I'm using your bathroom before we do this interview. Uh -huh. Because the pressure that he put on me not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's it's funny. horrible. As that's a woman, funny. it was really that, horrible. That's funny. Crossing your legs a lot, huh? A lot. And <laughs> so, um, but by the end, I knew that he was shy. Mm. He was that actor that could put the glove on, mm -hmm. and you would never know the man from the character. Right. I think I fell totally in love with him. I did a half hour show on Mrs. Dalfire, where he really, really was much more revealing. Mm -hmm. I think it's because we discussed that they had to shave. He's very hairy. That's why his yes. his production company was called Blue Wolf, because he had a lot of uh, hair with blue eyes. But he, So they had to wax his entire body for this movie constantly. Right, right, right. And I think it brought out his humanity, because he did talk more mm. about that his greatest pleasure when his mother was ill was to make her laugh. Right. That, gave, that kind of encouraged him to go on. His father was really successful executive, and he makes a joke about it. He, he said that they suggested he be an animal proctologist, and I can't tell you the rest of it because it's kind of dirty, <laughs> yeah. but it's where his hand was. Um, but the thing is that he said his father said, go do it. 
Mm. And because I the question was, with a father who's an executive, did he think his son in show business was a bum? Mm -hmm. And he said that he gave him a lot of encouragement. Mm. I was sad to see yeah, him absolutely. kill himself. Absolutely. Um, but then again, sorry, you know, Reba, he's an I, addict. Can I? I have one color on the Ooh. on the, and we're gonna keep continue this okay. conversation but they've already called back once so welcome to my caller on take my advice i'm not using it get balanced with dr marissa who am i having the pleasure of speaking to uh this is fred Plumley with kca radio and uh was calling to wish you a happy birthday Aww, and glad you're on the you. team thank you and what is your show uh, I have a show called Your Music Team. It's on every Sunday from 9 to 11 p.m. And the uh, show's been running about seven or eight years. Fabulous. So you play the, the top hits or? Well, it's kind of interesting what we do, Dr. Marissa, is we, it's kind of like a virtual nightclub. Uh, people call in and ask for music. We play it uh, live and mix it up live. We also have some great guests on the show as well. And uh, principal sponsor of the show is the U.S. Army, Army Strong. Interesting. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much for the birthday wishes. And uh, all my listeners now know another fabulous show on KCAA AM 1050. Thank you so much. And happy birthday. Good Aww, talking with you. Uh, you keep too. up the great show. Oh, thank you. Peace and blessings. Yeah, actually, I, I talk about music. I've been on KTLA quite a few times this last week. People, people have been Snapchatting my daughter saying, hey, I just saw your mom on TV. But apparently I'm in the promo for the Long Beach Jazz Festival, which always happens on my birthday because they're celebrating my birthday. And yeah, I Guess think it's all Guess who celebrates my birthday? <laughs> the whole country. Oh, July 4th? No, I'm born February 12th. I'm at President's Day sometimes. Oh, President's Day. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. Okay, back to Robin Williams. Yes, very sad. Would you say he would be one of those? Uh, I started with that theory around uh, the fine line between brilliance and genius and that despair. Yes, and I think he the Van Gogh line, I call it. He wanted desperately to be loved, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 the thing is that he had to learn to love himself. I think as an addict, it's difficult to learn to love yourself. Mm. But you're the doctor, and I'm just a celebrity <laughs> journalist. What do I know? <laughs> no, well, it, it, there, there, it, there is this, um, I think, this common with addiction uh, of any kind, whether it's alcohol or drugs or, uh, or, food. or food or shopping or gambling or sex addiction, uh, th that whole is the commonality that hole in your soul that that you try to fill up with something to make yourself feel good and you just f don't feel good you you have this uh, extremely strong self critic extremely damaging um, uh, feeling of isolation and loneliness well up on my website mm -hmm. is uh, Whitney Houston which is she's back in the news on a very sad note, yes. because her daughter was buried yesterday, and when you interviewed I, her, I interviewed her. She, the, the first time she stood me up, oh. on waiting to exhale, never appeared. Oh. The second time was the preacher's <laughs> wife, and uh, my interview was to be done on Monday, and I get a call in my hotel room. I'm in New York, and they said, "Come immediately to the interview site." Mm -hmm. They had a funny feeling she wasn't going to show up again. Mm. She was there. And my interviews at that point, I said, were playing in 60 countries. So there was a lot riding on sure. what I got. But sure. I knew that she was high. Mm -hmm. Okay. She uh, looks gorgeous. There was this, I, I can't put my finger on it, mm -hmm. but I could feel it. And so I'm going to just tell the truth. I set her up. Mm. I set her up with some questions to see what she was going to do. Like, you look like you have the Cinderella story. I mean, you're famous with a God-given voice. We already had the headlines from all the drugs. Mm. And she says, fame doesn't make you happy. I mean, she really opened oh, up. Mm. Uh, today, I feel a little guilty about that. I, mean, I knew what I was doing. Right, I right. promised you I don't do bad stuff. Yeah. But well, I, I wanted them to know that... Here was somebody that should have everything and did have everything mm -hmm. and threw it away. Mm -hmm. For what? Mm -hmm. that, it, that she wasn't good enough? My God. When she was in 
when she sings, I right. was like, I get goosebumps. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's really interesting that 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 not good enough ness that unworthiness that I'll never be good enough that's why I do the work that I do because all of that is bs it's a belief system that I don't know exactly why we have it but it seems to be a human condition okay tell me is okay. it from your mother <laughs> <laughs> if it's not one thing it's your mother right right uh, there's only two times in in life when you don't have mother issues when you're born and, and when, when you, you die, die. <laughs> And, and, and you know what? I believe that moms can exasperate things. But honestly, I, I've i been do, touring and doing career days. And, and even kids that have a healthy home somehow have that. So we have another caller. Uh, welcome to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. And who do I have on the air with me on the phone? This is Mark Westwood. Oh, How are you? It's my station manager extraordinaire from CNBC News Radio KCAA AM 1050. <laughs> How was that for promo? Hey, that's great. Happy <laughs> birthday. Aw, thank you so much, Mark. And especially from you, uh, I don't know. I did one show where I mentioned healing power of prayer towards you. You had a heart attack. Yes, I did, and, and thank you so very, very much for that. Yeah, uh, that wasn't that, that long help, ago. That positive energy is always helpful. I have a couple of uh, station people here. Awesome. We have Mike, uh, is our, one of our station uh, uh, traffic people. He wants to say happy birthday to you too. Happy birthday! Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. And dives around here someplace. She's on her way into the into my office here in just a second, and. Uh, so, I'll be wishing you a happy birthday. And, and I have some KCAA minions that want to wish you a happy birthday, too. Minions. <laughs> minions. Do you love the minions? I love the minions. <laughs> I love the minions, too. They're the ones that actually make the station work. So, thank you. <laughs> oh. Can you hear them? <laughs> That's the happy birthday minions from KJ. Oh, I hope you picked that up. Thank you. Yes, I picked that up. I thought you were actually talking about sound engineers. Oh, I wish you a happy birthday. It's so wonderful uh, to have you here on KCAA. And oh. I enjoy your show. Uh, especially, I listen to it on Saturdays now at 12. That's great. You can also listen to your show at 12 noon. That's right. Thank you so much, Mark, and everyone at KCAA. Love, love, love everything that uh, we do on the air. It's all good, positive energy, and best wishes to all of you there. Much success. Thank you so much. Happy birthday. Thank you. I'm going to have my birthday every week, I think. I always <laughs> like to have my birthday. <laughs> to be honest, this is my birthday month. I do that as do you, an Aquarian. Yeah. I do do a month of birthdays. Yeah. Well, I'm Leo in six planets, so... I can't help myself. Okay. <laughs> so we are almost out of time. Any last words about what, what, what do you, I'm going to pull an Oprah moment. Okay. What do you know for sure? You know how she always ends with what I know for sure. Reba Merrill, 80 years old. You've lived, you've juiced your life. You've interviewed some very, very big people. Um, what do you know for sure? Well, I'm not going to make a joke, because okay. I could have. Okay. I know that I am an intelligent, warm, loving woman who decided to go after what she wanted, got it, destroyed it, got it back, mm. and in second time around, enjoyed it to the nth degree. So I am lucky. Mm. not lucky that was lucky I was lucky that I had enough sense that when I destroyed because I am an addict and I will say that when I destroyed my life I got help and I was able to turn it around and the second 14 years of my career were the most wonderful years mm. I have ever spent working now that has nothing to do with the rest of my life mm. but it, for me to have a career and being 80 
God, I felt good. Yes, <laughs> it and, and it should, and it should. Thank you so much, Reba, for coming for on the air you. with me. You can actually see more of her I in the literally 10, ten minutes. minutes. When she goes live herself, and I just wanted to uh, finish off with my balance bar. What? Uh, and I mentioned the workshop. The next workshop, public workshop I'm doing is in May, <laughs> the weekend after Mother's Day. So if you miss the one on the beach, you get to do the one in Sedona. We are on day four in the 21-day fast from complaining with Dr. Marissa. Not too late to register and win your free pack of 52-car pick-me-ups, stacking the deck for life balance with Dr. Marissa, which houses each of the balance tips on the fast. And Janina Arvada now joins Daia from Long Beach and Eva from Kentucky as winners because they made 21 consecutive days in a row without complaining. So today's Asian Oprah giveaway is a stack of my cards. So the first one to go on LinkedIn and uh, connect with me and endorse me will get a free pack of the cards. And today's tip is actually... uh, uh, danger <laughs> anger is one letter away from danger so if you feel yourself getting angry and wanting to complain remember that there are two emotions according to Deepak Chopra that cause your cells to dysfunction anger and hostility and three emotions that make them function beautifully and those are peace love and and creativity. So that's your balance tip to stay complaint free for today. And uh, I get to go see Kevin Costner actually next week for my birthday. He's going to be performing at Belly Up in Solano Beach. And I am, you can wiggle your fingers, trying to get Coach White to actually come from that fabulous movie, McFarland. Wouldn't it be nice if Kevin came with him? (laughs) Uh, Next week, we are, it's that time of the month, the second week of every month, I get to play the kind Dr. Marissa, the kinder, gentler Dr. Laura with a call-in show uh, produced by Jarvis Essex, who also function as my fabulous sound engineer. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> and so please sign up with him on Facebook. And uh, that way you don't have to wait in line. But if you would like to get some uh, alignment, a tune-up on your life-balanced tires or smog check your critical thinking that uh, beats you down, then sign up and tune in next I week. Have- I have to say something. You've already made me feel better just being here next to you. Thank you. Oh, thank you for that. And with that, we'll see you next week on Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa Pay. That's P for positive. E-I. Remember, it's all about balance. Peace in and peace out. No man.